My friends, welcome back. This is Hayat Ben Shabbat to our ongoing series on homeschooling secrets. How to blend your education with your, your child's education with your occupation during a global isolation. Now, today we are on secret number five, which is be open to new perspective shifts. But before we jump into that, I got a couple of things to say. First of all, you might have noticed if you're watching these videos consecutively that yesterday I was wearing the same shirt. Now, you might be tempted to think I pre-recorded these, you know, multiple days in a row, but no, nope, no, nope, I'm actually wearing the same shirt two days in a row because that's just what you do sometimes when you are working from home and you are homeschooling. You know, the days sometimes they just all blend together and sometimes, you know what? You're lucky to get a shower. Sometimes you don't get out of your pajamas and some days you wear the same clothes a few days in a row. So it's one of the blessings and curses that come with the freedom and flexibility of getting to work and educate your children from home. So let's go ahead and jump in to secret number five, which is again, be open to new perspective shifts. Now I have to give you a disclaimer for this specific secret. I'm very well aware that I am talking to the 1% of the 1% of the population in this entire series and in this ebook, to be quite honest, because most parents are literally just praying for the day that they can toss their kids back at the front doors of the school. And like I've told you a number of times now, if you are reading along with me in the ebook, I totally get it. I totally understand. I have been there myself and I have absolutely no judgment whatsoever. But right now, my hope and prayer is that as you are traveling with me on this journey of homeschooling and while you're working from home, and as you are digging deeper into each of these secrets, my hope and prayer is that you're gonna begin to think a new thought and perhaps have a shift in perspective along the way. So why did I say that I'm talking to the 1% of the 1%? Because I'm talking to high achieving goal oriented moms, which is 1% for sure. And then I'm talking to the high achieving goal oriented moms who also are highly selective and specific about how they want their children to be educated. Now, why is that the 1% of the 1%? I'm gonna say something very bold and very un PC at the risk of offending some people. And I hope that I do not, but sometimes the truth hurts as we all know. And the first few times I thought this and the first few times that I heard it myself, I was a bit offended. Okay. So we all say that we want our children to have an excellent education. Yes. We want them to be able to do more and achieve more and go further in life than where we have gone, right? Isn't that what parenting is all about? But the harsh reality is that we really just want it to be convenient for us. Now, I've got to be tell you, I have been shocked, shocked. You know, I have run a private school for the last two years. As a result of our ongoing decade-long search for excellent education, we've been running our own private school for the last two years. And one of the things that I've been shocked the most about is how really at the end of the day, it all boils down to what is most convenient for the parents. So if it's a five minute drive too far, if it, you know, if the before care and after care aren't perfectly aligned with someone's job, if it's, you know, like this whole long list of things that basically boils down to convenience for the parents, it doesn't matter how excellent the education is. What really matters is does it work in the parent's life? Now, I get that. I really get that. As someone that, you know, runs multiple businesses and have, um, I have educated my kid as a single mom and I have known how hard it is to get your kids back and forth to work and to have to juggle with the carpool and this and that. And is the tuition, you know, line up just right with what I can handle? There are so many factors that go into picking the right education for your child. So I'm not saying this with judgment or blame whatsoever, but we all know that there's a lot of, uh, convenience factor that boils into finding the right or best education for our child. So for a little bit right now, while we're all forced to homeschool, okay, yeah, there's still some convenience factor that's in there for sure because we've still got to get our job done even though we're working from home. But 
This is an opportunity for us to re-examine what is really important in education to us? What do we really care about when it boils down to getting our kids the education that we think is going to set them up best for their future? So that's what I'm talking about when I say be open to new perspective shifts. Now, if you've already read secret number five, you're going to see I've got a lot of detail in there for you about my opinions on what is wrong with the current global educational system. And I hope you're gonna read that and share your feedback with me, okay? Now, the point of sharing what's wrong is not to complain, but it's to figure out, a lot of times we figure out what we do want through a process of elimination by figuring out what's not working and figuring out what we don't want. So right now, while you are the sole educator of your child, or even if they're doing some online learning and virtual learning you know, through Zoom meetings and things like that with your, with your kids' schools, you are still primarily the one that is responsible for their education. So I want you to take this opportunity and ask yourself, what do I think is really the most important for my child in their education? If I'm going to reverse engineer, if I'm going to work backwards and I'm going to look at what skills do I want them to have mastered, what uh, life lessons, what perspective do I want my child to go out into the world with, then we've got to reverse engineer that and look at what do I need to give them right now as far as their education is concerned. So when you are the one that is primarily responsible for their education, the sky's the limit. There is literally no limitation, no boundary on how you can pack their brain, how you can fill their imagination and their creativity and their um, ability to be uh, a critical thinker and compassionate and think globally while acting locally. They can learn anything and everything virtually through the good old World Wide Web right now under your umbrella if you just get a little bit creative carve out a little bit of time to say, okay, let's establish some new priorities. Now that I am the one that is primarily responsible for my child's education, what do I want them to learn? Maybe even if you take 10 minutes or half an hour or max one hour and brainstorm, when my kid is 18 or however old you think they're gonna be when they go out into the world, in today's day and age, in 2020 or 2025 or however old they're gonna be when they get out into the real world, what skills do they need? What frame of mind do they need? What experiences do they need? What perspective will they need in order not just to survive, but to thrive in the world? And if we can really start to dig deeper into that concept and that um, driver's seat mentality of giving our children a completely customized education, do you understand how their world can change? And not just their world, but your world also, as you really move from the passenger seat to the driver's seat of educating your children. And I have to be honest with you, a few years ago, when we were moving from homeschooling into traditional education and we were, uh, let's see, my son would have been going into the second grade and we were living in Australia and I was going to be putting him in a traditional education for the first time. I was so, I, I felt claustrophobic and limited on the how how seldomly I could take him out of school, how seldomly we could travel, how seldomly we could do creative things because we literally had to wrap our life around the school system and the school schedule. So all of a sudden the school scheduling and the school limitations became the filter that every one of our life decisions had to be made from. And it was so painful. I could not figure out how people do this. Now, I grew up with that mentality, but I had removed myself from it for so long that I forgot that you like don't do anything other than what the school says. And it is a very, very limiting place to be. Once we start to expand our mindset, you know that old saying that once the rubber band is stretched, it can never go back, or you can't fit an 11 by 17 dream into a three by five mind. And I just want to invite you to look at how might your life or your child's education be cramped by a very limited school system. And if you're willing to think outside the box, 
how much bigger can your child's education become? So that's it for today. I hope you're going to dig deeper with me into secret number five, and I'll see you right back here tomorrow for secret number six. Bye for now.